legendary green monster beckons anytime you come to Fenway Park here in Boston. And tonight, the Mariners try to get their first win here since May of 2011. Glad you could join us for Mariner Baseball. It's the Mariners taking on the Red Sox. Mariners playing some good ball. And as Lloyd McClendon said earlier today, this is the stretch drive. Got to get it done. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers with you. And the Root Sports crew is a look at the Mariner batting order that will face Joe Kelly. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Chevron. Leading off, it will be Austin Jackson, Dustin Eckley hitting second and playing left field. Robinson Cano, his career here at Fenway Park, a 338 hitter, 12 home runs, 63 RBIs. He needs to continue that through the weekend. Then it's Morales at the H hitting cleanup. Seeger, Morrison, Zanino, Chavez, and Miller rounding out the nine. Brad Miller again playing shortstop, rounding out the nine. For Kelly, two and three record of 467 ERA. And he has really struggled here at Fenway Park. You look at the rest of his numbers. First pitch in there. First strike to Austin Jackson. Umpires for tonight's ball game. Larry Vanover. Balls and strikes. Angel Hernandez, Vic Carapaz, and Pat Holberg on the bases. <laughs> Kelly making his first career appearance against the Mariners. 67 degrees here in Boston breeze. Of course, we're way upstairs in about the sixth floor. They feel a little bit more than maybe the down on the field. Flag at center field. Long straight in. Check swing. Did he go? And Andrew Hernandez says that Jackson's gone. Well, so far, Joe Kelly showing a good fastball. That last fastball to Jackson, 96 miles an hour. Take a look at the defense for the Red Sox. Cespedes is getting the start in left field. Betts in center. Craig out in right. Middlebrook's the third baseman. Bogarts and Pedroia playing up the middle. Nava at first, and Vasquez will do the catching. The change of fortunes. These two ball clubs is Dustin Ackley. Steps in right now. The Mariners very much in a playoff hunt. Half game out of the wild card chase. The Red Sox defending world champions buried in last place in the East at 56 up and 71 down. 18 games off the pace. Well, for Joe Kelly, he's feeling pretty good about his fastballs. That's all we've seen so far. Maybe it's because of the walk totals. They want him to settle in with his fastball first time through the lineup again. For the Red Sox, a 5-2-9 ERA, 0-1 record in 17 innings. He has 13 walks. Throwing a lot of strikes here early. Seven pitches, five strikes. Two and two is to count to Dustin Ackley. Five for 20 on the road trip. Three call. Kelly Sharp right out of the gate. And another good fastball. 96 miles an hour. Definitely above the knees. See if he gets it on the inside corner. Oh, that's more than enough. Right on the plate, middle end. Here's Robinson Kiddo. Sensational year for him, second in the league in hitting behind Jose Altuve. You know, second to Bautista, Jose Bautista, an on base percentage. Third and hits behind Altuve and Miguel Cabrera. For Kelly, he will throw both fastballs. A good four seam fastball, 95 miles an hour. Then he'll throw a two seamer. So that last pitch, 93, right off the outside corner. One one pitch. 
And that was a good four seam fastball in on Robinson's hands right on the inside corner elevated a little bit. But able to get in there with the velocity that he's throwing it here in the first inning and again throwing a lot of strikes a bit surprising when you look at his numbers. <gasps> Mariners come in having won two out of three in Detroit, lost two out of three in Philly. Back into this road trip, they'd love to come out of here in good shape. One, two. Takes the ball to two and two. John Farrell, manager of this ball club. At on the World Series, beating the Cardinals last October, slash November, foul ball. And that was the first off speed pitch. Like a changeup, cued it off the end of the bat. They've had a good run the last few years, over the last 10 years, 04, 07, and 13. Normally, you come into a city, fans and people you talk to, they really hacked off. But those three world championships the last 10 years are like, okay, it's a bad year. They went from last to first to last. They've done the last three seasons. 2-2 two -two Captain Cano. And after the changeup, right back in on his hands. Cano making him work. This next pitch will be the seventh pitch of the at bat. It will be interesting to watch the Red Sox and see what they do over the course of the winter. Well, they got some pretty good capital. I think they're going to spend it. Two and two. Diving played by Pedroia. Throw out Cano. And Cano going right to Angel Hernandez to protest. Not going to get him anywhere. And the Mariners go one, two, three. Glad you're with us here. We're underway here in Boston. Nothing across for the Mariners. The Red Sox coming to bat. These Mariner fans know what night it is. Happy Felix night, everybody. Got the cake cards and everything. Full road regalia. You gotta love it. Red Sox, here's the batting order that Felix will face tonight. First baseman Nava will lead things off. And it's Pedroia. David Ortiz, the DA, still getting it done. First in the American League with 93 RBIs. He also has 30 home runs. Cespedes is the cleanup hitter. He has 20 home runs. Then things get a little bit easier for Felix Craig, Middlebrooks, Bogarts, Betts, and Vasquez. Rounding out the nine for the Red Sox that have really struggled this year offensively. Take a look at Felix. 185 and a third. Sparkling ERA, 1.99. It will over 200 strikeouts on the year. 197 so far for Felix. Only 32 walks. Opponents only hitting 195 off of Felix. And you look at the Red Sox, 14th in average, 15th dead last in runs scored, 13th in home runs. I think basically stay away from Ortiz the entire series and you should be okay. 
Those numbers would indicate a pretty good setup. Now you got to execute. Yep. Always have to go out and play the games, don't you? <laughs> Daniel Navas, switch hitter. Play at first base. Five time All Star. All Star game starter. Felix Hernandez. Hopefully, he'll get a fairer, more representative strike zone tonight with Larry Vanover behind the plate as opposed to Tony Randazzo last time out on Saturday, August 16th. Well, that's a good start. That breaking ball off the plate away, but he gave Felix the call. He did miss a fastball early in the count, so let's call it even right now. Two and two to Nava. We talked about it with Felix breaking his run of 16 in a row, seven plus innings, two runs or less. He ended up going five innings in those last outing. It was still just two runs, but only five innings pitched for him. But it took him 92 pitches because of how tight the strike zone was. Full count here to Nava. Swings and drives it. Long way. Slicing away from Jackson. He runs it down. One down here. <laughs> Fenway Park. A little breeze blowing straight in, but we've seen this from Austin Jackson since he's come over and really helped out in center field for the Mariners. In left field, it'll be Ackley out in right field, Indy Chavez. Kyle Seeger at third, Brad Miller getting the start at shortstop, Cano and Morrison on the right side of the infield, and Mike Zanino will do the catching. And for Felix, he has really had a lot of success pitching here at Fenway Park, 3 and 1 with a 2 3 6 ERA. Dustin Pedroia, 300 hitter with a home run against Felix. It's strike one. Felix this year, 26 games started. This will be his 27th, but the 26th that he has started, 23 quality starts for Felix. Living, breathing definition of a workhorse. A little Petey, Dustin Pedroia, the base hit. Here's what Felix has done in series openers. That is a good record of 236. The bullets hitting just 202. Look at that whip. Wow. Lots of hits in. Great pitch and strikeout and walk ratio. Outstanding as well. Here's David Ortiz. Big poppy turning 39 coming up in November. Still a very productive player. Well, you can see the numbers against the Mariners this year a 364 hitter with a home run and four RBIs, but 30 home runs and 93 RBIs for the season. Mariners will put the shift on. Kyle Seeger on the right side of the infield. Ortiz first in the American League with 93 runs batted in. Also tied for third in homers with Chris Carter with 30. By Zanino. Red Sox have lost five consecutive ball games. Angels just came in and swept them. Angels later on tonight take on Oakland. Big weekend series. When you look at the Red Sox lineup, Pedroia, who has a base hit, was hitting an even 300 off of Felix. Ortiz, 324, both of them with one home run each. Count goes to three and one. It's trying to get comfortable. In his office out there. I'll just keep scratching away at the mound until he gets it where he wants it. And he's had a lot of success on that mound. Three and two. Career wise, 16th start. For Felix against Boston, 8 and 2 with a 2 9 7. As Mike mentioned, 3 and 1 with a 2. With a uh, two three six here. 
not surprised by that at all. Dealing with the big crowds that they normally have here in Boston. This doesn't look like it will be a sellout tonight, but it feeds off of the crowd. Not surprised he's pitched well at this ballpark. 3 2 pitch, runner goes. Swung on, base hit as Pedroia jumps over that base hit. Chavez will get it back in. Early trouble here for Felix. Runners at the corners and will bring up Yoenis Cespedes. Well, this is interesting to me. You have the shift on Kyle Seeger on the right side of the infield. Pedroia running with the pitch. And Kyle was the one that went to cover. If you have the shift on, I'm surprised it wasn't Brad Miller to cover. If they would have kept Kyle in his position, this is a routine ground ball right to him. And they determine that before the pitch is made. Sometimes it will come from the dugout on which one's going to cover. But it's up to them, I think, more times than not to figure it out. And I was surprised that Brad didn't cover on that. Here's Cespedes. Still surprised that the A's gave him up. But they did get John Lester in return. Boy, gave up four hole hitter. And if you look at what they've done offensively since he's been out of their lineup, the Oakland A's, it hasn't been good. Well, it's will take a ground ball double play right now. He is probably thinking strikeout. He will take the ground ball double play, but typically in these situations, he'll try to get the strikeout. Cespedes in his career hasn't hit much for average, but 14 home runs in 49 games. Let's see, gets Mariners. That's uh, I've seen that act before. Got a 1 1. Yeah. Tried to hit it to the River Charles for crying out loud. What a swing that was. Felix again will go over 200 strikeouts again for the season. 197 at the start of this one. One two. Seeger or Cano. There's your double play. Right on time. Right on time. Red Sox turned away. No scores. We go to the second. Day games tomorrow and Sunday as the Mariners hunt for the postseason continues. Now's the time for you to get on board by putting a deposit down on 2015 season tickets. You not only get a great seat location for next year, but you'll receive priority for 2014 postseason tickets. Join the Mariners lineup as a season ticket holder and enjoy exclusive benefits all year long. For more info, visit Mariners.com slash 15. How about that double play? Turned by Kyle Seeger, Robinson Cano, and Logan Morris. Mariner crew in the house here with their Felix 
gear on like seeing that around the American League as we float around and up on the green monster the Mariners represented. See quite a few of those t-shirts here at the ballpark and I like the King's crown good mm -hmm. stuff. There's Kendris Morales DH leading off the second inning. It's Joe Kelly. Four five and six here in the second inning Morales Seeger and Morrison. Throws out Morales one away. Well, Kyle was able to help Felix out with that double play ranging to his left. So he didn't think he'd get things started with the Mariners here on the offensive side. Kelly again throwing a lot of strikes came into the game with 13 walks and 17 innings but so far 18 pitches 13 strikes for him. Five games here at Fenway Park for Mr. Seeger, 318 hitter. And Kyle leads the club in home runs and RBIs. 19 home runs for Kyle, 78 RBIs. In particular, handle and way of the 18 homers. 19. 19. He's got 15 at, uh, at home. It's different because the previous two years he did most of his damage right. on the road. Remember and, that? Yeah. And I, I think with Kyle, he's, I mean, you can see it from the shifts that are put on him. They, the Red Sox do not have one on right now. But I think for Kyle, he's been able to get himself into a position. He's a little bit closer to the plate, and he hits the baseball to right field a lot. And typically when he hits it to right, that's where he hits for his power. And at Safeco, he's obviously comfortable there. And if you're going to hit it out, that's the direction you want to go. In. And Kyle has taken advantage of it. So maybe he's learned something. I can remember as he goes down looking on that pitch. He thought that pitch was inside, but according to the tracer, just on the corner, he didn't like the call. And I can remember Don Mattingly talking about Yankee Stadium, Dave, and he said he had to learn when he first came up, he hit the ball to left field all the time. And you take a look at that good running fastball from Kelly. And he said once he got the big leagues, he saw that short porch, and he just figured out a way to where he could hit the ball out to right field more often, and that's when his home runs went up. Quick two outs here in the second. Logan Morris, eight for 22 on the road trip. Logan hitting 329 over his last 20 games, five doubles, a homer, nine RBIs. In those 20 games, he's had a base hit in 19 of them. So he's six game hitting streak, 364. They put a big shift on him, 101. Logan had faced Kelly when Logan was with the Marlins. Kelly with the Cardinals. Logan two for five with a home run against Joe. Joe Kelly has a good fastball. Tonight he's topped out at 96, been consistently 95 with his four seamer, his two seamer 92 93. The Red Sox will put the shift on with Morrison. Looks like Middlebrooks, the third baseman on the right side of the infield. Pedroia out on the grass. Nava right on the line. Nice catch. Ball drove in there, two and two. Thing the Mariners are finding out, especially the left handed hitters. Kelly's not afraid to pitch inside. He pitched inside to Cano. We saw Seeger and now Morrison last pitch in on his hands. At the end of the bat. Middlebrook's throwing him out. And one, two, three seconds. So six up, six down. No score here at Fenway.
Just a reminder of baseball and a reminder that this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Here we go for the second inning for the Boston Red Sox. I'll have Alan Craig, Will Middle Brooks, and Xander Bogarts. Billy Hernandez, pitcher's best friend. They get an inning ending double play, 5 4 3. Going around the horn to end that first frame. Here's Alan Craig, former Cardinal. And Kelly coming over from the John Lackey deal at the trade deadline. As we mentioned earlier, Felix starting tonight with a 199 ERA. Obviously, he's going to be consistent to have an ERA that low, especially at this point in the season. But to give you an idea, and Felix has nine wins this year, his ERA is at a 194. Mm. In his nine no decisions, his ERA a 194. Wonderfully consistent. <laughs> well, and he really struggled through his four losses. It went up to a 2.30. <laughs> it's right. unbelievable. Have they put the Cy Young Award in his locker yet? I'm telling him. We told him get the engraver. Call him two weeks ago. Felix may not win the MVP, but he's going to be in the discussion. And it probably figured finish in the top five. Felix? Well, I would think so. Two and two. Strike three call. But Felix with strikeout number 198 on the season. First tonight. Well, again, we talked about it with the lineup of the Red Sox. It's really struggled as Felix gets his first strikeout of the ball game. But when you look at the Red Sox, 30 home runs for Ortiz, 20 for Cespedes, and after that, it's pretty slim. Middlebrooks, who just struck out, or excuse me, Craig, who just struck out 143 since coming over to the Red Sox. Middlebrooks hitting just 193 on the year. Bogarts, 224. Betts, 241 in limited games. And Vasquez, 241, also limited in the action that he has had this year. So some inexperience. And a Red Sox lineup that we're just not used to seeing. A lot of moves, a lot of injuries. Mike Napoli's got some injury problems. He didn't play last night. He had back spasms. He's not in the uh, lineup this evening. One and two. Here's what they did against the Angels. Look at that. Eight runs, but 35 men on base and just two for 35. That, those are eight runs over four games. Mm -hmm. That just two runs a game. Uh, that's, that has been a struggle. Good fastball for Felix in on Middlebrook's hands. You hear some Mariner fans chanting the K chant with Felix sitting on two strikes. We saw quite a few of the yellow shirts here. Especially during batting practice, they were gathered around the Mariners' dugout. Here's the one, two. Nano taking a look, not coming back. Up on the green monster seats they have up there. Breaking ball, got him. Back to back strikeouts. Looking, it's number 199 for the season. This looks like the curveball on the outside corner. You can see the 12-6 break on it. Zanino doing an excellent job as usual, and that pitch is perfect. Right on the outside corner at the knees. Good curveball from Felix. If they forget about that pitch from time to time, everybody's so worried about his change up in his fastball, they forget about how good his curveball can be, and that was an excellent 12 6 curveball.
Here's Andrew Bogarts, the shortstop. Is way ahead here on two on Bogarts. Day games the next couple of days. You've got Chris Young, the comeback player of the year, leading candidate. Goes against Brandon Workman. And Sashi Iwakuma, brilliant in Philly the other day against Alan Webster. Our Century Link Link to what's next. Oh, two. Hit well. Left field. Going foul. Third base umpire Pat Colbert. And as you would expect, John Farrell going to come out of the dugout. Talk to Larry Van over the home plate umpire. And he's aware of the fact that it's so difficult for his club to score runs, and especially with Felix on the mound. I can't blame him for coming out. But Holberg had a good look at it the entire way. This is that's not looking down the baseline. That that angle is off. Again, Holberg looked right down the line, and it looks like they're going to take a look at it. And I don't blame Farrell. It's close enough to take a look, but Hoberg made the call immediately. He was in great position, had a great look at it. And you can see the ball low home. And from that angle, it looks foul. Again, the angle. Here's high first. They're showing enough much of the replays on the big screen here, and the fans just saw that one again. The angle is off. Nothing down the line so far. Well, with the naked eye from our vantage point, it did look foul. It did jump off the bat. Can't tell from that. We haven't had a look yet that I don't think that you can tell. And again, they'll have to overturn it, the call, which was called foul. And I don't think they're going to see anything, at least we haven't, to overturn the call. Call stands to be an 0 2 count to Bogart. Yeah, it was an 0 2 count. Pitch was actually in off the plate inside. Fastball running in on his hands, and he was able to get the barrel to it. But all the replays that we have seen, there hasn't been one shot straight down the line. I don't, I don't know how they're going to overturn it without having that look. Crew chief Larry Van over Pat Hoberg. They two looking at the big screen. They're taking a long look back in New York. Pat Hoberg pointing and again they'll have to yeah, they will have to get a look to overturn that and because of the angles being off I'm not sure they're going to get it. So we got. Foul ball. Absolutely, positively, cannot blame John Farrell. Like you said, scuffling no. the way they're trying to score runs. And you're up against the best pitcher in the league. I think that you have to, to take a chance, and he did it. Again, 
I'm not so sure that if he would have called it fair and Lloyd would have come out and challenged it that they would have overturned that. That's how close it was. Yeah, good change up from Felix. Review time three minutes and 12 seconds. Close. Point two. Swing and a miss. And there it is. Strikeout number 200 on the season for Felix Hernandez. The sixth consecutive year. He's hit that magic number. End of two. No score. At home, take on Texas beginning on Monday. Look forward to seeing you at Safeco Field. Geico, this state in MLB history. The Express, Nolan Ryan strikes out Ricky Henderson. 96 mile an hour fastball becomes the first big league pitcher to record 5,000 strikeouts. He had to be what, 44? He was up there, yeah. yeah. Still throwing 96 miles an hour. Wow. Indeed. Bottom third of the order here for the Mariners. Zanino Chavez and Miller against Joe Kelly. Kelly's retired the first six men that he's faced. And then Mike paying attention. A lot of first pitch fastballs. He's thrown a lot of them for strikes, and that one right down the middle of the plate. Mike a little late on it, 93 miles an hour. Fist fouled off. Last start for Zanino on Tuesday in Philly. Mariners win at 5 2. Drove in two runs. Two for three. Broken 0 for 16 skid. As he's gone here, strikeout number four for Kelly. And Kelly's retired seven in a row. Just wants to elevate the fastball. All three pitches to Mike. Fastball is that one just above the strike zone, and Mike not able to catch up to it. Bring up the veteran Indy Chavez. Four for ten on a road trip. And dating back to his last nine games, he's got seven hits dating back to August 6th.
for one. Middlebrooks, the third baseman, playing in on the grass. And straight to call. 34 pitches, 25 strikes, and he's starting to mix in his changeup and curveball a little bit more. Add to the problems the Mariners have had with him so far. There's the first base hit. Indeed it is. Off the bat of Indy Chavez, out of the box hard. Right fielder Allen Craig gets to it, gets it back in. First Mariner base runner this evening. Indy coming into the game hitting 274 on the air. He's done a good job for the Mariners. So that average going up with that base hit. We'll bring up the number nine hitter, Brad Miller. Two for a hot streak, don't you think? I think so. Middlebrooks, the third baseman, still in on the grass. That would certainly help the Mariners and Brad. Get him going in the right direction. Make one to Brett. One for seven on this road trip. There are some triples in this ballpark. Out to right center field. It's 420 feet away. 380. Not down the right field line, but as you move out, I'll, I guess about 25 feet, it immediately jumps out to 380. There's some triples here. A lot of crazy bounces in this ballpark. The on one. That misses for ball one. Curveball. All two strikes, one out, one on. Bill Kelly, born in Anaheim, 26 years old, went to UC Riverside, third round pick of the Cardinals in 09. Went 10 and 5 last year with a 269 ERA for the Cardinals, the NL champs. Did that 37 games, 15 starts. Hit hard. Pedroia smothers. Bogarts over to Nava. A four, six, three, double play. That'll do it for the Mariners in the third. No score here at Fenway.
in Boston. Let's take a look at what Felix is getting done so far this evening, Mike. Well, he's starting to turn it on again. Three strikeouts in the last inning. Strikes out the side, and for Felix, 200 strikeouts on the year. The sixth year in a row for him. Just continues to add to the sparkling numbers for Felix through a couple of innings. 35 pitches. He's given up a couple of hits, and there you can see the three strikeouts, all of them coming in the bottom of the second inning. Only Randy Johnson has seven consecutive seasons of 200 or more strikeouts. Here at Fenway Park, the in stadium entertainment, folks played a, a video of Jim Rice. Got a chance to talk to him before the game. He still looks great. 62 years old, a Hall of Famer, great left fielder here for the Red Sox. It's Mookie Betts. I don't know how I get to talk to Jim about this. We we're just catching up. Hey, Hawaii, I haven't seen you in a long time. And start talking about players. And he talked about the fact that here he is, a Hall of Famer. And David Ortiz and, and uh, Dustin Pedroia, the only two guys that, that will come to him and just talk up hitting yeah. and ask for advice yeah. and, hey, what do you see? What can I do? And he loves giving the advice. And he said, <laughs> down at spring training, when he's down there, if nobody comes, he said, I'll just get to the, to the uh, tee it up a little bit earlier. But what is it with, uh, I, I hear this in all the sports, but right. with, with older guys, you got esteemed guys like that, Hall of Famers, you know? You don't pick their brains. Well, I, I think that a lot of it, Dave, comes down to them. They're most of the players, especially the younger ones, are just intimidated by them. You mentioned the two players, Pedroia and Ortiz, both of them all stars, perennial all stars, and have done a lot in this game. So it's probably easier for them. But when, when, when the guy you're talking about, Jim Rice, makes himself available, you have to take advantage of that. There's no reason not to. And why wouldn't you? Two and two. Miller plays it well. Throws out Mookie Betts. Right. Fireworks coming up. And we want to see you there when the Nationals come to town. August 29th. Get your tickets right now. Big post game celebrating Seattle's music scene. So we look forward to seeing you at the ballpark on the 29th of August when the Nationals come to town. Finish up that story. He said Mr. Aaron doesn't have anybody come to him soliciting information. Can you believe that? Well, I hope, my hope would be that when Edgar Martinez is around the ballpark, that the guys would go talk to him. As far as the Mariners go, greatest right handed hitter that's ever put on a uniform. And the DH award is named Name. after him. And you're not going to meet a nicer guy or anybody that's more willing to talk hitting than yep. Edgar. So hopefully they take advantage of that. Christian Vasquez, the catcher. 101. Felix with three strikeouts. Struck out the side in the second inning. Felix has a good curveball tonight. He was talking about his stuff against the Tigers to start this road trip, and that first time in a while that he had, he didn't feel that he had his best stuff. It looks like he does tonight. He really hasn't used his slider much. He basically off-speed pitches. It's been his changeup and curveball, but he has a good curveball tonight. Bounce to Seeger and tacks it. Makes an easy play to away. To the top of the order and Daniel Nava. Our first time out, he had a ball slicing drive to left center field. Went towards that 379 sign that Austin Jackson outran. He made the play. Well, again, the key to it for Jackson, we've seen it. Yes, he has great speed, but he also takes direct routes to the ball. There isn't any wasted time for him. Always seems to get a good jump out there. Felix so far, 45 pitches, 31 strikes. He 
Dodgers ahead of Navo and two. And again, the curveball right on the outside corner. Jones first came to the big leagues. He was 95 to 97 with the great curveball, and obviously he's involved and evolved into a really special pitcher. And it came up with that changeup, and now he also has a plus slider. That's a changeup in the dirt. We're talking about it on the radio side in the pregame show as you look at his pitch count. And I made the comment, Dave, and I, I think that you would agree with that with his knowledge and his ability to pitch and the way that he competes, I think he could still lose his fastball towards the 89 90 and still be effective and get people out. He's going to pitch for a long time. Oh, there's no question. If he stays healthy, absolutely. Knowledge. You know he's, he's gained so much. Still a, a very young man. He looks at what 28 years old. 28. Yeah. One or two. Struck him out. That is four strikeouts in the first three innings in the scoreless ball game here in Boston. Little flashback, April 11, 2007. It was a cold, dank night here in Boston. And Felix Hernandez against Daisuke Matsuzaka took a no no late in the ball game. He was sensational, and then TD Drew, base hit. Felix out dueling Daisuke Matsuzaka. There he gets Kevin Euclid. Wins the ball game. 3 nothing victory for the Mariners. You can see how much weight Felix has lost since that time, too. Well, and you also saw the great curveball that we were talking, or I was talking about earlier in that in 2007. Again, he was dominant with a really good fastball, mid to upper 90s in that curveball. And the other thing I remember that is going into that game, everybody was talking about Daisuke, oh and he just stole goodness. the show. I can remember the hotel was buzzing, walking around the street, people were buzzing. Top of the order, here's Austin Jackson. It's inside for ball one. Nice kid. They just paid just large, large, large dollars to get him over here. The transfer fee was what, 50 mil or something? Pay him another 50 mil. So far, Joe Kelly has faced the minimum. There has been a hit. Indy Chavez with the only hit for the Mariners. But the next batter, Brad Miller, grounded into a double play. And you can see. 41 pitches, 30 strikes, throwing a lot of strikes, which is a bit surprising when you look at his overall numbers. He's walked a bunch of batters in the 17 innings that he has pitched, but right now he's starting to feel it with everything. First inning, a lot of fastballs, and now he's starting to mix in a curveball and a changeup. First career appearance against the Mariners. Well, the Mariners try to take care of business here in Boston. Angels and the A's get together. Big series starting this evening. 
It'll be interesting to see how the Angels do. We we're talking about Cespedes out of the lineup for the A's because they traded him to the Red Sox, and now Garrett Richards out for the season. That's humble. That's huge. Yeah. Outside. Had a knee injury right here at Fenway Park. Yeah, last night that series at Oakland. 2 2 pitch. Outside for ball three. Mariners have 13 games remaining with the Angels and the A's. And Austin Jackson. There's the walk we were looking for. Lead off walk at that. That's it. Getting the men on board. The Mariners 7 and 5 against the Angels and 7 and 6 against the A's as we look. The wild card chase. Mariners start tonight half game behind Detroit. Yankees and the Blue Jays, Cleveland and Tampa Bay. Pulling up the rear in this chart here. Mariners in really good shape. So saying every time late in the season, no matter what sport, to control their own destiny. Well, that's why I think it will be an interesting series to watch the Angels and the A's. Mariners take care of their business here, and if one of those clubs sweeps that series, it's good news for the Mariners. Especially as you mentioned, Dave, with the 13 remaining games between the two of them. Fouled off by Ackley, 0 and 2. Took a call, third strike his first time up. Dustin has really been swinging the bat well. I've said it before. I don't think it's a real big mechanical difference for him. I, I just think that when he's aggressive, he has a lot more success. Hit the other way, deep down the line, slicing foul. The other part that we've seen from Dustin, he will use the entire field. Good fastball, 94 up and away from just going with the pitch. O2 offering a throw over to first. Jackson back safely. Mariners looking for their first win here at Fenway since May 1 of 2011. They've lost nine consecutive games in this ballpark. On Tuesday, Jackson started the game off with a walk, a game that the Mariners did win in Philadelphia. Also stole second base and then stole third. AJ Burnett real slow to the plate. Big leg kick. Yeah. And because of that, you can see Kelly now working hard to try to keep him close to first. And again, another throw over. One of the things that Jackson does, and that I like if you're a base stealer, is even on pitches that he's not going to run on, he still practices his jump. That first step, he, he comes off hard like he's going to run. And I think that helps him with his timing to get a better jump when he decides to go. 0 oh, 2 to Ackley. Staying alive. Yeah, another fastball away. Kelly's still throwing hard that fastball at 96 miles an hour. At bat by Ackley 0 2 with Jackson at first. So throw down first base and we see Vasquez done a lot of work with the Molina brothers. He's like the unofficial fourth Molina brother, so look out. He's got the good footwork, good arm. 
picked off Howie Kendrick last night in the ball game. Sure did. Doing the exact same thing. On two strikes. Right to Nava. To Bogarts. Back to Nava. Safe. I think a little bit of the inexperience of Nava at first cost him. The ball was hit. He was right on the bag. I think in that situation, if he touches first base, he can still throw it to second. Bogarts would have to tag the runner at that point, but you can take a look. He's right there. Just step on the base. And then you would have Jackson in a rundown. He gets him out easy at first, but actually with good speed, able to beat it out. I think if he steps on the bag, that's the better way to go. Most first basemen would play it that way. So a break for the Mariners. Dustin running hard. And just beating it. Close play and a good call by Angel Hernandez at first. Brings up Robinson Cano, grounded out to second base. One to Robbie. Down the line, foul ball. One count to Cano. Good change up. And he was trying to get out there on a fastball. Well located too. Right on the outside corner. Just 84 miles an hour. And again, Joe Kelly throwing hard at 96. So Robinson trying to cheat a little bit on the fastball. But a well located change up. He's way out in front of it. Good speed at first base, one out. Two and two. That will wake you up. After the change up away, he comes back with a good fastball up and in, 95 miles an hour. Hitters don't mind you pitching in, but they don't like it up in that area. He goes back with a change and oh, I'm going to go back inside. 2-2. Two, two. And well, deep center field. Ricky Betts is there to make the play. Two outs. Brings up Kendris Morales. He bounced out to second baseman Dustin Pedroia. Shift for Morales and as he looks at strike one. Morales with three home runs in the last seven games. Good sign for the Mariners, get him going in the right direction. Bats on the run. Oh, did not ball. catch it, did Storm. not get Storm. it. Storm. Did not get it. Oh, Third man. base umpire. Now he throws it over the head. And here's Ackley scoring. And I'm sure there'll be a review on that. Third base umpire Pat Holberg was waving it off, saying, no, 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 he didn't get it. You can see Mookie Betts, he thinks that he had it. 
What a great play. That's a catch. That's a catch. John yeah, that's Farrell's catch. come out of the dugout. That is a catch. What a yeah. great play by Mookie Betts, the young center fielder. Yeah, Watch the way he turns his glove over. So many times an outfielder will get the glove to where it's turned down, but he's able to get his glove underneath it. It hits right on top of the webbing because of the way he turned it over. And a great catch. I was surprised that that Ackley didn't just keep running it on them because he think he knows he's caught it right there. That I think that's a catch and that'll probably get overturned. But I thought Ackley should have just kept running and then he ended up throwing the ball to the backstop. That was a mistake on his part. Tremendous effort. Good jump, good closing speed by Mookie Betts. And, and then the way that he was able to turn his glove all the way over and get the webbing underneath the ball before it touched the grass. Yeah. It was a good job. Here's Ackley. He's running. Uh, two outs. And then he stops at third. And then Donnelly was waving and trying to get him to run. And then the ball goes to the backstop. And that's when Dustin is able to go across home plate. And now Larry Van over the home plate umpire is going to take a look at it and again. See him turn his glove over. And it looks like it hits right on top of his glove and the webbing of the glove. And then he's able to catch it. Marcus Lynn Mookie Betts. What a great play. Brentwood, Tennessee, fifth round pick, 2011 amateur draft by the Red Sox. Still a puppy. He'll be 22 until early October. Well, he just showed the replay on the big screen. And the Red Sox are walking yeah. off the field. Yeah. They're telling him no. And Joe Kelly dropped the ball on the mound and <laughs> Angel Hernandez called them back. <laughs> and they just made the call. There we go. Great effort by Betts. Take a possible run away from the Mariners. Nice play. Being brought to you by CenturyLink, your link to what's next by Jack in a Box. Right now at Jack in a Box, try Jack's spicy chicken club combo for just $4.99 plus tax. By BNSF Railway, sponsor of the BNSF Blast, and by Seattle City Light. Visit seattle.gov slash power for more information. Statue of Ted Williams outside Fenway Park. Here in Boston as we open up a three game series. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew, and happy 75th birthday to another Red Sox Hall of Famer, Yaz, Carl Yastrzemski, who succeeded Ted Williams in left field. He's 75 years old today. It'll be Pedroia, Ortiz, and Cespedes, the tough part of the lineup. 
here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pedroia with a base hit his first time up. Hit a ground ball right back up the middle. Ortiz followed with a base hit, but Felix was able to get out of it, getting Cespedes to ground into the double play. Those are the only two hits for the Red Sox. And Felix now at 50 pitches, 35 strikes. Got four strikeouts. He's over the 200 strikeout mark for the sixth consecutive year. Randy Johnson, the only Mariner to go seven consecutive years with 200 or more strikeouts. He's ahead of Pedroia, 0 and 2. Side who could draw it. Draw it with that first inning hit. Now has 10 games on the homestand, 11 games, 11 days here at home for the Red Sox. Part of the success here in Boston, Dustin Pedroia, and of course, so much success for Mr. Hernandez at the Mariners. Well, that was fought off. That pitch was up and in on him. Well, you know, you're going to get a tough at bat from him. And Felix has made some good pitches. That last pitch elevated a little bit. It looked like a backup curveball. Didn't really have much bite to it. Maybe it was a slider. He fouls it off, but he's also made some good pitches that he has fouled off. Now that's the changeup. One, two. Down low. Mariners three and three in the road trip. Sox, they've lost five consecutive ball games. All kinds of problems. Can't play to get the baseball after all. <laughs> Senior takes his time, throws across the marks and one away. Give your home a dash of royalty when you head to Felix Hernandez Bobblehead Night, Saturday, August 30th. It's King Felix collectible free to the first 20,000 fans. And the Mariners take on the Washington Nationals at 610. They're off room in your mental or shelf for the Mariners ace, but not before you pick up tickets. Felix Bobblehead Night at Mariners.com. What about the game winning leap? Game exploits of the Nationals over the last 10 days. Been phenomenal. Seven game lead. And the NL East over Atlanta. Here's Big Poppy. And Ortiz looks at strike one. What a career he has put together here in Boston. You can see 30 home runs, 93 RBIs. That leads the American League. The base hit to right his first time. 30 home runs that ties the club record with Ted Williams. Eight seasons in a row with 30 home runs. Eleven large. Eight seasons with 30 home runs. That's a good curve ball again. Cheese with 461 career home runs in his 18th year. Saturday and Sunday coming up. I did some interviews when they were in Seattle. Talked to Harold Baines. Actually, we were in Chicago. Talked to him about DHing. What DHs should go into the Hall of Fame. And we also spoke with Ortiz about this. Boy, he spanks this one into the gap. And a one out double. 25th double of the season. It's two for two night. Came in a 324 hitter with a home run against Felix Hernandez. And he hits this double the other way, going against the shift that the Mariners had on. They had the shift on. Jackson shading towards right center field. And this is a good fastball, 93 miles an hour. And you can see the coverage he has. That pitch actually just off the plate away, and he hammers it into the left center field gap. Not take long for that ball to get to the ball out there. One out, Ortiz at second. Here's Cespedes bounced into an inning ending double play in the first. And 
And that was the only the only other opportunity the Red Sox have had so far with a runner in scoring position. So Ortiz is double. This will be the second. Red Sox 0 for 1. Certainly was 0 and 2. One of the things I've noticed with Felix, and we've talked about it before, Dave, when Cespedes, when he was with Oakland, and we saw it in his first about today, Felix is the one pitcher that will consistently pitch him inside and pitch him in off the plate. And a lot of times Cespedes will swing at it. He will expand the zone, but Felix, he's not afraid to go in there. Another changeup. 0 and 2 strikes. You look at the Red Sox this year, they are 12 games under 500 against right handed pitchers, right handed starting pitching. And now you're up against the best in Felix. He did go. This is Larry Vanover. Suspect is gone. Strikeout number five for Felix Hernandez. Two outs here in the fourth inning. This is the changeup for the slider. We'll take a look at it. It's the changeup. You can see the circle change that Felix throws, and just the bottom falling out of a good job by Zanino to keep it in front of him. Larry Van over the home plate umpire, said that's far enough. Emphatic call. I bring up Alan Craig. He's the first strikeout victim of Felix tonight. Struck out looking in the second inning. He's at second. Felix trying to leave him there. In front. Oh, two. A couple of off speed pitches. First pitch to curveball and comes back with a changeup. He is, he is so difficult. Not just because of the stuff that he has, but he does such a great job of mixing up his pitches. Can't sit on anything if you're a hitter. Oh, two to Craig. And this ball one. Get Craig one and two, two out, one on. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Half a dozen strikeouts for Felix through four in this scoreless ball game.
All right, Angie, thanks so much. Felix doing his job. Get him some runs. He gets Seeger, Morris, and Zanino five, six, and seven here in the fifth inning. Joe Kelly, who struck out four, walked one. Breaking ball to Seeger. Strike one. Took a called third strike his first time. Well, the Red Sox are not putting the shift on with Kyle. We've seen that a lot this year, but Middlebrook's the third baseman, well off the line at third. Bogart's at short, shading towards the middle of the field. Enough men to board. And Kyle hit by a pitch. Seventh time that's happened to Nino. League leading 14 times he's been hit. Now looks like he takes this one right in the back. 94 miles an hour. I hit him pretty good. When it drops back out in front of home plate, that's a solid shot. Kyle will feel that one in the morning. That was a full speed version of the commercials that he shot before the season. Of course, they were tossing softballs during that time. That hurt. Shift on against Morrison. Inside for Bowen. And this is interesting again. Middle Brooks. Yep. On the shift. Usually he would be where Pedroia is, the second baseman, but hey, I've him even further over on the right side of the infield. So they're going to put the shift on and still try to be in position to turn a double play if they can. Foul ball. Person could play a big role coming down the stretch here. Certainly the hope, the one-one. He's been swinging the bat well. Yeah, he's picked up a base hit in 19 of the last 20 games. Big Lloyd would like to see him drive the ball in the gaps or out of the ballpark a little bit more, but you have to start somewhere and he's steadily bringing that average up. Came into the game hitting 239, but at one point he was under 200. Looks at ball three. Detroit one nothing over Minnesota and Minneapolis. That's in the top of the second inning. Kansas City two Texas one. That's in the top of the second in Arlington. We count here for Lomo. And it hold right oh, to the. Boy. Shortstop oh. throws it away. Seeger going to dig for second, and he'll get there. What a break! Oh man! A bad break for Morrison because he hits this ball hard, and again, Bogarts the shortstop, the only one on the left side of the infield. He gets rid of it quickly. Kyle gets too far off the bag, but now, but that's a play that he should make. Ball gets past him and Kyle will move up to second. Mm. Break for the Mariners. Couple inches here or there. That's a base hit. Man, he hit that ball hard. Yeah, base hit, and all of a sudden you have a big inning. Absolutely. Ready to take off for you. We do have Seeger in scoring position with one out. Brings up Mike Zanino. Struck out on 0 2 pitches first time up. Now, yeah, three pitches his first time up. All of them fastballs away. Inside for ball one. So Aaron Bogarts allows Seeger to get the second base. And a good 
good count for Mike Zanino. Let's see if we can, he can hit the light tower up above the green monster. <laughs> oh, uh, Manny. Manny did it, yeah. <laughs> Felix certainly doing his job through four. He's got six strikeouts, hasn't walked anybody. It's allowed no runs on three hits. Here's a 3 0 count. Three zero counts. There's three for seven, two home runs, six RBIs. Andy Chavez waiting on deck. He has the one hit for the Mariners tonight. Turn him loose. I think if you have a right-handed hitter with power, why not with the short porch and left? Take advantage. Back. That's the pitch that he wanted. You can see it's right on the inside corner and elevated for him. He fouled it straight back. Strikes out for the second time. Two outs. Fifth strikeout in the evening for Kelly. Let's take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Day games Saturday and Sunday, then back home. Long, long flight after the Sunday afternoon game and then take on the Texas Rangers. Day off Thursday in the Washington Nationals. Come to town. will be back on the road again just nine home games in the month of September next road trip three in Oakland four in Texas all the Mariners with one base hit as a team and Indy Chavez has the one to get it and a line drive out into right field average up to 278 now for Indy Two and oh. Don Farrell and the trainer coming out to take a look at Joe Kelly. Last fastball seemed fine. It was off the plate, but 94 miles an hour. with his back. His arms, let's see. Turn to look at the infielders. Well, when he was with the Cardinals, he had some health issues, so Farrell is going to be careful, and if he sees him react oddly, he's going to go out there. Great Jameson. Trainers out there. He said he's fine. Time pitching coach He's here with Boston prior to going to Toronto for a couple of years and then coming back here as the skipper. Andy ahead here 2 0. Oh. 
Lead run at second. Seeger reached on a hit by pitch. And then an E6 got him to second base. Takes a strike, didn't like it. Well, it's good curveball in the strike zone. 2 0, he was expecting the fastball. Take a look at the last pitch, breaking ball. Indy, I think, thought this pitch was down. Three balls, one strike. Brad Miller waiting on deck. To a double play his first time up. See if he makes it happen here. 3 1. Took it for ball four. So two outs. First and second for the Mariners. Second walk of the game for Joe Kelly. Chance for Brad Miller. Bounced into a double play in his first at bat. Opportunity knocking here with two outs and two on. Brad's able to check his swing. Ball one. Playing him straight up in the outfield. This is a big outfield, especially out towards right center field. You can see the size of the gap out there. It's 420 feet to that angle, the corner out in that area. The old triangle out here. Yeah. Fenwood Park. In the glove of Vasquez. Brad got a battle here now. One and two. Two out, two on. Two. 81 pitches now for Joe Kelly. 81 pitches, 51 strikes. Dad called. Opportunity here for the Mariners a 2 2 pitch. Pitch for ball three. Good fastball, 95 miles an hour. He's still throwing hard. What's Brad looking for here? He's going to look for a fastball, but I, I think he just has to keep his head on the home plate. Seeing Kelly. He may not give in to him. He, he threw an off speed pitch to Chavez. 3 2 pitch. Runners go. And he missed with the breaking ball. And they are loaded up for Austin Jackson. Did not want to give in to him. It was the breaking ball off the plate away. And that is back to back walks. One of the keys of the game. Coming into a Joe Kelly. 17 innings, 13 walks. He now has three walks in this game, including the back to back. 
Austin Jackson struck out swinging his first time up and then walked in the fourth inning. Well, this opportunity cannot be colored any more golden than it is. Well, he's done well with the bases loaded. 306 batting average, three for six this year with the bases loaded. And there's good speed out there. Mm -hmm. Seegers at third, Chavez at second, Miller at first. Jackson is struck out and walked tonight. Off the plate, ball one. Doing a job on his pitch count. 84 pitches now here in the fifth inning. Nobody throwing in the Red Sox bullpen. Fielder bets a few steps towards right field here for Jackson. Bases loaded, 1 1 pitch. Outside for ball two. He's got to throw a strike. Well, I think Austin Jackson is probably thinking the same thing right here. Probably be a fast ball away. Could be an action pitch here, two and one. Fouled it off. It was the fastball, middle of the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Kelly on the ropes here. Jackson trying to knock him through the ropes. Building anticipation. And a big 2 2 pitch. Two outs. Bases loaded. Popped it up. Pedroia is under it. And Mariners strand three. No score here in Boston. Face. Well, he's pitched well. We gave you all the numbers of Felix, especially in this ballpark where he has done well. The Mariners, though, have struggled here, still trying to find a way to win a game. They haven't won a game here since 2011. Felix has done his job going over 200 strikeouts for the season. He's at 201 now for the year. Only giving up three hits. It's a little run support. Good opportunity for the Mariners missed. Joe Kelly, who was really cruising. 
Helped the Mariners out. Hit Kyle Seeger in the back with a pitch, then walked a couple of batters to load him up, but the Mariners just could not come up with the big base hit. Good news, he's at 88 pitches, probably has just one more inning in him. And they are starting to get loose in the bullpen for the Red Sox. That's good news for the Mariners because Kelly was a little bit too tough for him tonight. Kelly, 39 pitches through the first three innings and then 48 over the last two as Felix first pitch. Will Middlebrooks is in there for strike. Felix with six strikeouts on the night. 203 for the season. And Mentick will check in with her before long. It's like Greg Breslow. Mm -hmm. Set outside corner. Middlebrooks took a call at third strike. Two and two. Middlebrooks, Xander Bogarts, Mookie Betts, six, seven, and eight. Two two. Back him off full count. Mariners would love to capitalize on the fact that the Red Sox going badly, losing five consecutive ball games, and Zanino couldn't hold on to that one. Three and two. Mariners three and three on this road trip. Knowing full well that the Angels and the Athletics open up a big weekend series tonight in Oakland. Come ball, Brad Miller goes across to Morrison, and here's Angie Menton. Angie, thank you. Here is Ender Bogarts. This is strike one. Struck out swinging. Second inning. And he just missed a home run. 0 oh. 2 count. Hit <laughs> it. The truth. Just foul down the left field line. My right, chopper goes foul. To third base when Red Sox came to Seattle. Mariners took two out of three. Another one foul. <laughs> when it's easily replaced, we won't have to get a bill. He was diving for in the ball. He'll never. Oh, look out! Oh, oh my gosh! Thank goodness the air flap. I, I think that was the changeup. 88 miles, still 88 miles an hour as it hit him in the helmet, and Felix yeah. reacted immediately. He did not want to do that. Take a look at it. Well, that, that, was, that might have been the two seam fastball. <laughs> Boy, that's scary. He'll just turn his head at the last second. Mm. Goodness, for flaps. And not so olden days. You know, that would. 
Kessler to knock him out of the game. Not like the Dickens, but at least they got a lot of flap too. Well, at least he's back up on his feet. Pretty sure that's a basic concussion test. Yeah, they want to make sure that his eyes are going to follow. Mm -hmm. and it looked it looked as if he was in good shape. He wants to go. Yeah, he does. Well, that's good news. Scary, scary for Felix too. His reaction, he was worried about the young man. Felix just told me just put his head. My bad. Take a, keep an eye on Felix. You can see his reaction right away. And yeah. He did not want to do that. Ungrich just ran a few steps. Smiling, that's a good sign. So far, the play of the game. Diving catch out in left center field. Kept Ackley from scoring. Ended up robbing Morales of a base hit. One out, one on. That's his first time up, grounded out the shortstop. Felix now at 84 pitches, 58 strikes. Ahead. No balls, two strikes. Mariners had a great opportunity. Bases loaded, two outs in the fifth, could not score. With the runner on in the fourth inning as well. Felix is stranded in a runner in the first and in the fourth. He struck out six. He's hit a batter, not blocked anybody. To get Felix some runs, you don't want something freaky or stupid or silly or just something crazy happening here, you know? You have to score to win, and that's kind of where they're at. Felix is doing his job. Hey, you just can't. I mean, how much more can he ask him again? Well, for the Mariners tonight, through five innings, they've only had one opportunity with a runner in scoring position, and that was in the top of the fifth. Bases loaded with two outs. Mm. Just want to get the big hit. One hit, Indy Chavez. Mm -hmm. One out, single in the third. He got a race to the double play. Nice job by Zanino. This is the curveball, 12 6 curveball, bounces out in front of home plate. You can see how he gets his body leaning forward, so he just smothers it when he blocks. So many times the catchers are almost straight up and down. That's when you'll see it deflect off to the side. He does a good job smothering the ball, keeping it close to him at home. Ball and two strikes. Ugly swing and a great pitch by Felix fooling Betts that is strikeout number seven. It's on the curveball, late check swing. Welcome to the 
big leagues kid. Well, he'll hear, he's going to hear about this one from the guys in the dugout. I guarantee it. <laughs> no argument. Two away, and at first, there's Christian Vesquez, the catcher. Grounded out to Seeger at third. Seeger will get him again. So, Felix hits Bogarts in the head. Bogarts is okay. The best news Felix a little shaken up himself. No score here in Boston. Thank you, Andy. Craig Breslow, a veteran left-hander. The Yelly is in the game now, replacing Joe Kelly. Tough year for him. ERA over five. He has 24 walks and 46 innings. Opponents hitting 303 against him, and he's given up three home runs. Hopefully, those numbers will continue, and the Mariners can scratch out a few runs against him. Kelly was good tonight. Five innings, just gave up the one hit, no runs. He did walk three batters, five strikeouts. He threw 88 pitches in this one. Breslow will have Dustin Ackley, Robinson Cano, and Kendris Morales, two, three, and four. Boy, do they need some runs because the Kings getting it done at his end. Here we go with Ackley. That's your strike. Dustin able to reach base his last time up reached on a fielder's choice. Austin Jackson was on first. He was thrown out at second base. Bouncing ball to Nava. And did he beat him? Oh, he just got him. Good speed by Ackley. He did a very close play. I think it's a good call. Again, Nava a little shaky at first base. Takes a long time. Breslow slows down right before he gets to the bag and Dustin thrown out by about a half a step. We'll bring up Cano. Round out to second baseman Dustin Pedroia to fly out the center. Mookie Betts. Cano five for 21 against Craig Breslow. It's this one high, deep, left field. Going back, it's going to get a big chunk of that green monster. A one-out double for Cano. 
His 29th two base hit. That's the best part of Fenway Park. That green monster. That pitch away on the outside corner. Cano goes with it. He has popped the other way. We've seen that this year. He drives it off the wall. The key is you have to hustle out of the box. Because it's so close to the outfielders, you're going to see a lot of plays at second base on what you would normally think is a normal double. There's Brez, Breslow going to face Kendris Morales. A fairly hot hitter from the right side lately. Yes, he has been. He swung the bat much better from the right side. Mariners tonight 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. Morales 3 for 4. Career against Breslow, who's in his second tour of duty with the Red Sox. Been here since the 12 season. He was also here in 06. Second fly to center tonight. Brislo has been with the Padres, Boston, Cleveland, Minnesota, Oakland, Arizona, and now in his third year here with Boston in his second stint. 1 1. Foul ball. Made that hit right above the guard. Not sure it hit on the guard. Morales going to walk it off. Take a look at the swing by Morales. See where it hits him. Hit him in the back knee. Hmm. Second time on this trip, we've seen him hit the back knee. I think you're right, and it's a rare. You rarely see that. Typically, when they foul it off their leg, it'll be the front leg. It happened in Philly. Ball two strikes. Cano at second. It did go. Doesn't believe it. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> Angel Hernandez said he did get through the zone. So there's two away now. Here in the six, Breslow with his first strikeout. Pitch well up and out over the plate. Give it up to Seager with two outs. Try to get this run in. For three against Craig Breslow. Top of the sixth here in Boston. First of three. Afternoon action tomorrow and Sunday. Mariners come home. Short homestand. Come on out to Safe Gold Field. The Rangers and the Washington Nationals be in town. One to Kyle. Count for Kyle, two outs, and Cano at second. Bouncing ball. Nando's got it. To the bag he goes. And another runner stranded. Home six coming up. Scoreless ball game.
Root Sports is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Money Tree, proud to make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports crew. A gorgeous night here in Boston, Massachusetts. We'll have day action for you Saturday and Sunday before the Mariners come home. Meanwhile, Felix Hernandez throwing another beauty, but not getting any run support as you look at the upcoming uh, homestand. Three with Texas, three with the first place Washington Nationals out of the National League East. That should be fun. The opportunity is just yes. so big for the Mariners. Well, they are. It's right there in front of them. It starts with this series and this game, and Felix is throwing a good one again. Unfortunately, he is now at 87 pitches. At the top of the order here, Nava, Pedroia, and Ortiz. I'm 0 for 2, fly to center and a strikeout. Oh. On one pitch. Back up the middle, hit the bag. Nava will go for second. Here's a throw off line. How about that? And not the way you wanted the inning to start. Line drive just misses Felix. And it looked as if it was just going to go into center field as a base hit, but it does hit the bag. Nava keeping an eye on it once it bounces out into right field. The outfielders had to run a long way again. This is a big outfield. You have to play a little bit deeper. And by the time Jackson, the center fielder, gets to it, Nava hustling in for a double. That is a tough break. Just the kind of thing I was worried about last inning. Yeah, and he made up his mind early. Cano plays this one. Pedroia moves the runner up. As you would expect. Mm -hmm. He's playing his part. The right play. to tell you I, I think I would put him on he's been a hot hitter for him 93 Amen. RBIs leads the league 30 home runs this year you have the right hand hitting Cespedes waiting on deck Cespedes tonight grounded into a double play that would help Felix he's also struck out that would also help Felix and they're going to do it because I can't I, they beat me to the punch I couldn't agree with you more <laughs> he's only 35th all time in home runs with 461 and as we mentioned he's two for two tonight Came in with a 324 batting average against Felix. Hold up the four fingers. And you can see Cespedes in his career against Felix. 200. Alan Craig is hitting behind him, and he has struggled hitting just 143 at the start of the game behind Cespedes. So I, this is the move you have to make. What they need is Felix's eighth strikeout. 32 at bats Cespedes has had against Felix. He's keyed 11 times. 12's a nice number. Mariners return home this Monday at 7:10 to face the Rangers and continue their hunt for the postseason. What's more, fans can pick up select $10 view level seats, part of BECU Family Night. To get your savings, log on to Mariners.com for tickets. Well, big spot in a ball game here. Similar situation earlier in the game, back in the first inning. First and third with just one out after hits by Pedroia and Ortiz. And Cespedes is hit into the double play. It was a good double play started by Kyle Seeger. 32 at bats, 11 strikeouts. Cespedes against Felix Hernandez. Boy, a long hold, ball one. Hustle doubled by Nava. Pedroia moves him to third with a ground out to second. Intentional walk or a tease, and now he's getting a little tight. Fouled off one one. And Felix now at 96 pitches. Nobody getting loose in the pen for the Mariners. Saloy McClendon 
going with his guy. But it's a dangerous hitter. One one. Ball two. Two and one. The double play he was looking for in the first. Second one right here would be very tidy. Two one pitch. It's like a NASA countdown. <laughs> Lift off. Well, I'll see if Felix. Goes to the changeup, try to get the strikeout. Alan Craig's on deck. He got Ortiz at first. Bobbitt third. Huge pitch. 2 2. Hit foul. Look out. That was a fastball inside. We talked about it with Felix earlier in the game when he was facing Cespedes. Out of all the Mariner pitches, Felix will pitch inside to Cespedes more than any of them. Good running fastball, probably in off the plate. Fans down there. That ball is in their heartbeat. Two balls, two strikes. Runners at the corners in a nothing, nothing game. Sixth inning pitch from Felix. Hit foul again. Right at 100 pitches. And the bullpen looks like Danny Farquhar is going to start to get loose out in the pen. Good battle here. Felix against Cespedes. Two and two. The pitch. Fouled off again. What a battle. Another good changeup from Felix down out of the strike zone. He's trying to get the strikeout right here. But even if Cespedes hits it, it's going to be on the ground. Well located changeup. 89 miles an hour. Kind of fun matchups. That can be excruciating. Top power hitter against a brilliant pitcher. Here we go again at 2 2. The pitch. Uh oh! Oh my goodness, he killed it. Absolutely killed it. Tower two minutes ago. Oh my goodness. Well, for Felix, he made so many good pitches. Cespedes has kept fouling him off, and it looks like the last pit pitch is a changeup, but he leaves it up in the zone. Probably just below the belt. And this is a towering home run down the left field line. Wow. Ooh. That is so. Let me see it. That is Jay Buhner territory. That is just some sick power. One mistake. Boy, oh boy. Take a look at this. Had the sound. Oh, my goodness. Felix giving up his ninth home run.
Yeah, you talk about the mistake getting punished. And that was a great battle, and yeah. Felix threw him a number of change-ups, and Cespedes was just getting a piece of him, and again, that, that last one was the only one that he left up in the strike zone. The other ones were all down out of the strike zone, and Cespedes, give him credit, he didn't miss it. Take a look at the location. They want it down in the zone, and he just doesn't get it there. Cespedes catches it out in front before it has a chance to drop off the table in just below the belt. And he hits it over everything. Damn, man. Three nothing socks. Give up hope yet. Boston ninth in ERA, and the Mariners are into their bullpen. Felix. They're just going to have to turn on the hit parade. They only have two hits through six. Well, Joe Kelly was tough on him. We'll see what they can do with the bullpen. Felix, this is 109 pitches. Two. Second walk of the inning in the ball game. First walk is intentional to Ortiz. Bill Brooks would be the sixth man they hit here in the sixth inning. Looks like Lloyd's going to stay with him. 110 pitches into it. If you looks a chance to get out of this inning. One out three runs in runner on. Ball one. There you go 25 pitches in the inning Mike Zanino. Good idea make a quick trip out to the mound. Check on him, make sure he's okay. Get him focused back in. Oh. And there, first strike. Little one. Little Brooks. Strike out looking, ground out to short. Two. On the pen, Farquhar sat down. Now it's Brandon Mauer getting loose. Destroyed that bat. One and two. And he started. 1-1 one, one pitch novice singled right past Felix. It hit the second base bag, dribbled into short right center field. Nava hustling all the way, gets a double. Pedroia, ground ball to second, moves him up. Ortiz intentionally walked. Two, four, seven was about a nine pitch at bat to Cespedes, and he hit a monster three run homer over the green monster. I mean, that thing is one of the hardest hit balls we've seen all year. Craig walks, and now Middlebrooks. Looks trying to put him away at one and two. Sixth inning, a three-round homer by Cespedes has Boston up three-nothing. Be here this fall. 
As Big Sky Conference football kicks off on Root Sports, presented by your local Ford stores. Watch the Eastern Washington Eagles take on the Montana State Bobcats. All the action begins Saturday, September 20th, on the home of Big Sky Football, Root Sports. And Felix's night is over. So he'll leave with two outs here in the sixth. Cespedes with a just a gargantuan home run has Boston in front, 3-0. Thank you, Angie. Brock Holt going to pinch hit. Brandon Maurer takes over the mound for the Mariners. And for Felix tonight, back-to-back -back outings where he didn't work seven innings. Unusual. Five and two-thirds, five hits, three runs. They were all earned. A couple of walks. He did have seven strikeouts through 116 pitches, 78 up for strikes. Throwing ready. Brandon Mauer. Oh, straight back. Oh, 291 hitter missed average on the ball club. For Mauer on the year, 514 ERA. He has a 1.90 and 18 relief appearances, so much better out of the bullpen. Rock Holt, the super versatile player. Done everything but pitching. And catch this season. But most of his work, 34 games at third, 28 and right. 2 1 pitch. Gets a corner, 2 2. And Bogart's hit in the head by Felix. And it wasn't a glancing blow. It hit him solid. He tried to stay in the game, and I'm sure that's the reason why he's out now and holed in. You don't want to mess around. Head injuries. No. No way. Yeah. Uh, so they weren't going to take a chance on it. Foul off. Brandon throwing hard again out of the pen. That last fastball, 97 miles an hour. Takes off 3 2 pitch. Foul back again. 
Seventh man to the plate here. And the Red Sox sixth. Green two. Took him out. Damage done by Cespedes. Three run Jack. Mariners trail three nothing here in Boston. Flight and uh, to take it back to Mr. Cespedes, Mike. I don't think there was much doubt about the call on this one tonight. This is the difference in the game a three run home run. Roy McClendon deciding to walk Ortiz. We all agreed that was the right move. Unfortunately, it did not work out. A Cespedes, it's his 21st home run of the season. Craig Breslow, as we look at Brock Holt, he'll play at shortstop now. Came in for Bogarts. Been a sixth game at shortstop. And with Logan Morrison stepping in, the Red Sox will put the shift on. Middlebrooks on the right side of the infield, Pedroia out on the grass. Second inning for Craig Breslow as they check down to third base, Pat Holberg. Since he did not go. Like Bert Baden hop getting loose. One one to count to Morrison. Ground out and a hard line out from Bogertz. He's back in the fifth inning. Shortstop. A lot off. Got a strike. One and two. Seventh inning, Lomo leading off. I'm just trying to generate some offense. They have two, count them, two hits. Now back into Chavez, a single. Third inning, sixth inning, a one out double off the Green Monster by Cano.
Fly ball. Center field for Mookie Betts. On away in the seventh ride with all your fans on Sound Transit. And enjoy freedom from traffic and parking. Plan your next trip. Visit soundtransit.org. And that will bring up Mike Zanino. A couple of strikeouts for him. One swinging, one looking. Detroit 1 0 over Minnesota, top of the fourth. Kansas City 4 1 at Texas, bottom of the fifth. Bottom eight. Wow. Tampa Bay 8 0 at Toronto. Yankees tied 3 3. Bottom seven in the Bronx against the White Sox. Front. Angels and A's will start in about 25 minutes. You see Mike shaking his head, guessing fastball. Ended up getting a change up down out of the strike zone. He struck out looking and swinging so far tonight. Way out the front there. On two strikes. Slow a New Englander out of Trumbull, Connecticut. Went to Yale University outside two and two. Mariners have their Ivy Leaguer and Chris Young who will pitch tomorrow. He went to Princeton. Two and two. Been interesting watching Mike this year going back and forth, which is typical of young players. Him, he's in his first full season. And he's doing such a good job at home hitting the ball the other way, letting the ball travel a little bit. And on this road trip, so he's trying to catch the ball out in front a little bit more and has caused some problems for him. And again, he has so much more on his plate than anybody else trying to catch this pitching staff. The best pitching staff in the American League is Chavez waits on deck. He has a base hit. One out, nobody on full count for Zanino. Struck him out. Three K's for Mike. Two down. Brislow's second strikeout, two away. Here in the seventh. For Century and Link, a link to what's next will be on your TVs in the morning at about 10:30 Pacific time. Chris Young against Brandon Workman, and Sashi Wukuma against Alan Webster. Pre-game show start at 10 o'clock. Chavez and Cano, the only Mariner hit so far tonight. Down three nothing. Cespedes cleared the green monster. Three run homer against Felix. Harris just have not been able to get much going tonight. Only two hits for him on the evening. Indy with one of them. Four one to Indy. Lane starting to heat up. 
strike to Indy two and two. Breslow in his second inning of work. He had two strikeouts. Gave up the hit to Cano with one out in the sixth. Two two. Counts run full. Brad Miller's on deck. Ran into a double play and walked. Indy's had three good at bats. They had a base hit. He also walked. Now he works a 3 2 count. Baden Hop and Lane getting loose. Baden Hop, the right hander. Two pitch. Walked in. Two out base runner for the Mariners here in the seventh. First walk issued by Breslow. Brad Miller stepping to the plate. Brad grounded into a double play and walked his last time up. He can find a way to get on base. And Austin Jackson hit one over the monster. Craig Breslow. Yeah, that was a box. Well, base hit will get you a little bit closer now after the balk. You can see Breslow. He was going to go home, saw Indy take that stutter step, decided to go to first, but Indy went back to first, and then he decided to go home. A lot of things going oh, on right man. there. Yeah, oh, you can see it. Angel Hernandez, the first base umpire, called it immediately. Mariners tonight 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. Wind blowing straight in from center now. Picking up. American flag in center field. Unfurled now. Brad's got a 1 1 count. Outside for ball two. There's the flag. Breeze is picked up. Catcher Christian Vasquez. Austin Jackson's on deck. Brent calls time. Pitch to Miller. It's it up there. Vasquez. I'm have to talk to 34 year old Craig Breslow. Craig sure. just celebrating his 34th birthday back on August 8th. From John Farrell, manager for the Red Sox in the dugout. I'm real happy right now. You're up three to nothing. Been able to get Felix out of the game and you walk a batter with two outs and now he has the opportunity to walk another one. Three one count to Miller. Three one pitch. Walked him. Uh -huh. 
And that will do it. Reds walk twice tonight. Here's a threat by the Mariners. They left them loaded in the fifth. Maybe they can capitalize here in the seventh with Austin Jackson. Two men aboard, down three nothing. All right, Angie, thank you very much. Here's an opportunity for the Mariners, two on. Jackson represents a tying run. New pitcher is Burke Badenhop. In his numbers, he's pitched well for the Red Sox, a 2 6 1 ERA. 32 strikeouts, 17 walks, a lot of walks. Opponents hitting 276. Good two seam fastball and a slider. Came over in a trade from Milwaukee last November. Been with Florida, Tampa Bay, Milwaukee, and now the Red Sox. One one can here to Austin Jackson. Bounce foul past Rich Donnelly. Jackson 0 for 1 against Badenhop. Austin tonight a strike out a walk and a pop up. You have a team that has been struggling like the Red Sox Dave and. Typically they'll give you some opportunities you have to cash them in and we saw that. With the Mariners back. In the fifth inning a hit batter and two walks Mariners weren't able to get the big hit now two walks with two outs here. Left them loaded in the fifth inning. Say relief win percentage, Red Sox the lowest in the league behind Houston. It's kind of struggles that they've had, but bottom line is you got to take advantage of that. You're here. Here then over with the punch out. And a strand two more. Home seventh coming up. Three nothing Boston.
is brought to you by Washington's Lottery and the Department of Imagination. What would you do if you won? Nice breezy night here in Boston, Massachusetts. First of three with the Red Sox. They went to Cespedes. Almost hit one up in those lights, clearing the green monster. Here at Fenway Park, Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew. Three run home run, a 2 2 pitch, two on in the sixth against Felix Hernandez. And that's the difference in a ball game. Meanwhile, the Mariners, over the last four innings, have stranded seven men. They left them loaded in the fifth. They left two on in the seventh. When we were talking about it, we're trying to give the Mariners an opportunity to get back in the game. Maybe somebody to come up with a big base hit. Hasn't happened for him. Brandon Maurer will stay on. He came on for Felix. Here's Mookie Betts, center fielder. Christian Vasquez and Daniel Nava to follow. Betts a ground out and a strikeout. Mariners will have Ackley, Cano, and Morales 2 3 4 in the eighth inning coming up. Two and two. Mark the full count to Betts batting out of the eight hole. Just got a piece. the line here comes Chavez and he puts it away catch all the second half action on MLB.tv premium the number one live streaming sports service watch every out of market game live in true HD on more than 400 devices visit Mariners.com for details Here's Vasquez twice grabbed it out to Seager at third Xander Bogarts had to leave the game but Check for uh, concussion symptoms. And Joe Kelly, the starting pitcher, left for precautionary reasons. One oh, one, Vasquez. Round out the third a couple of times, keeping Kyle Seeger busy. Two and one. Minnesota leads Detroit now, six two, top five. To Minneapolis. Three and one. They closed out Toronto eight nothing. That's a final. Daniel Mount was on deck. Three one pitch. Broken back ground ball to Miller. Brad throws him out. Two away. So Charlie Purvis getting loose in the pen for the Mariners. Hour so far, 20 pitches, 11 strikes. Here's Charlie back in his home area. Portland, Maine native. A few hours north of here on the coast. Hustle double for Nava in the sixth. Leading off would turn out to be an eventful inning. 
The screamer back up the middle. Felix just got out of the way. Ball hit the bag. Took a slight right turn in the short right field, and he hustled his way in the second. Moved to third on the Pedroia. Fly ball gives this one pretty good ride, but Jackson's got it. The big blow assessment is three run homer. They're sitting by Bauer. To the eighth we go. It's the Red Sox 3-0. Turn Mr. Cano. Most multi hit games on the road versus any opponent in so five when he broke in. At Baltimore, at Oakland, Marlins, and Boston, he's done quite well. Been on the list a couple of times. We'll see Rabbi here in this inning. He's on deck. Backley will lead off. New pitcher for the Red Sox is Tommy Lane. So Tommy Lane, pairing in his 12th game coming up, he's got three holds, good ERA. Opponent's batting average of 111. Brenner's trying to generate some offense. Red Sox pitching. So the Mariners did two hit and Indy Chavez third inning single to right and a sixth inning Robinson Cano double off the Green Monster. Actually tonight strikeout looking reached on a fielder's choice and grounded out. Grounded out the first. We talked about it with the Red Sox. They've tried to help the Mariners out with Four walks and a hit batter through a couple of the different innings in the fifth and in the seventh. Mariners not able to come up with the big base hit. And it looks like they're going to be in good shape again. Lane having a tough time throwing a strike. Ackley quickly 3 0. Lane 6 2 190. 29 years old out of St. Louis, Missouri. And a four pitch walk. Maybe that's a door opener. Coming up this fall on Root Sports. It's the high school football game of the week. Presented by Papa Murphy. As we kick off the season Friday, September 5th, featuring the Capital Cougars against the Tim Water Thunderbirds at 8.30 p.m. Don't miss your favorite local teams in action this season on Root Sports. Robinson Cano, one for three tonight, doubled off the monster his last time up. About three quarters of the way up. Eight or two. Yeah. Cespit is a three run homer. Difference in this ball game. Got it off of Felix Hernandez. Tommy.
Tommy Lane signed as a free agent last November. Originally drafted by the D-backs, 26 round back in 07. Sent to the Padres in May of 2012. Ball to Pedroia. There's the hook. Nice dig by Nava. For a 6 3 double play. Second one turn tonight by the Red Sox. Gets a fastball in the middle of the plate. Routine two hopper. Pedroia gets rid of it quickly. And Holt again taking over for Bogarts. Good pick at first by Nava to complete the double play. Offense really been held in check tonight. Tommy Wing, fourth pitcher used by Boston this evening. Wayne with the Padres last year, 0 2 in 14 games. What a turn of events for John Farrell. Last fall winning the World Series and now in last place in the American League East. Two and two. Strike three call. That'll do it for the Mariners in the eighth. Three nothing Boston. The first of three here at Columbia Bank. Difference of the ball game. You don't have to search high and far for this one because this ball went high and far. Almost hit the light standard out in left field as it left the entire ballpark. Ended up in the parking lot. That's been the big hit in this game. A three run homer for Cespedes. His 21st home run on the year. Back here. 
At Fenway Park, got to be a thrill for Dominic Leone out of Norwich, Connecticut, getting a chance to pitch in this ballpark tonight. Or Dominic, his fastball typically right around 95 miles an hour and a hard slider. On the year, a 2.65 ERA, 54 strikeouts in the 51 innings that he has worked. Opponents hitting just 237 against him. Get the tough part of the lineup. It'll be Pedroia, Ortiz, and Cespedes due up. Dominic Leon's family coming up from Norwich, Connecticut. First pitch to Pedroia is off the plate for ball one. Ball to Seager. One away. So an easy two hour trip up from Norwich, Connecticut for Dominic Leone's family and friends here to Boston. And he's going to get David Ortiz here. And it looks like the Mariners will have to get their work done against Goji Uhara getting loose in the pen for the Red Sox. Series hero last year. Two for two night for Ortiz, intentionally passing in the sixth to set up a double play opportunity, but on a 2 2 pitch and about three balls fouled off, Cespedes launched one, a three run shot. That's a score in the ball game. Mariners have the shift on with Ortiz hitting. Kyle Seeger on the right side of the infield. That's Cano out there on the right field grass. One one count. Thank you. Cespedes with his 21st home run ran his RBI total to 83 with that jack in the sixth inning. Strike one. It's an error for Boston. No runs, two hits, no errors for the Mariners. Development in Minnesota. Twins holding off the Tigers now at 6 5, Minnesota. Bottom of the fifth. Now, ball ended up getting a piece of Mike Zanino. Looks like he hit him on the forearm. I'll take a trip out to the mound, walk it off. Mike Trout is homered for the Angels in an early lead, 1 0, top of the first. Off 
offer. No protest from Cespedes. He's gone to them. Two away. Leon with his first strikeout. Next Tuesday, the Mariners says the Rangers. 7-10 start time. Plus, it's salute to Native American night. First 10,000 fans, 21 and older, receive a free Mariners cap courtesy of Emerald Queen Casino. Stop by Mariners.com to pick up your tickets. Here's Alan Craig. Two strikeouts and a walk tonight. Twentieth straight game, twentieth consecutive game that the Red Sox game has exceeded three hours. They play some of the longest games in Major League Baseball. It's been like that for a while. One of the better fastballs we've seen from Dominic, 97 miles an hour. Well located too, is down and on the outside corner. Feels good tonight. With the family and friends pumped up a little bit. Absolutely. 36,433 on hand here at Fenway. 1-1. One, one. Right to Brad Miller, and that will do it. Well, here we go. To the ninth. Mariners down 3-0. They got Seeger, Morrison, and Zanino coming up. He was a big hero last year in the World Series. And how about the 44 perfect appearances he had in 2013? They had 26 saves this year, a 153 ERA, 72 strikeouts and 58 and two thirds, only seven walks. It's terrific numbers for him. Opponents hitting 192. Daniel Nava will move out to right field for the Red Sox. Kelly Johnson take over at first base. You are not a hard thrower, but he will throw a lot of strikes and he typically throws them on the corner. That's his fastball at 90 miles an hour. Just sensational last year, particularly in the postseason. Popped up foul. Starring Yamayuri over in Japan, then in Baltimore. 
in Texas. And we'd seen him a lot and uh, going back to 09 when he made his major league debut he was a nice pitcher but last year was just he was almost unhittable. Couldn't find anybody <laughs> to take the closer role and he ran with it and again he's not overpowering not your typical type of closer. But effective and he will change speeds. Again 72 strikeouts to just seven walks. Mm. He's going to make you earn it. Seeger, Morrison, and Zanino here in the ninth. Locked up. Playable. Vasquez stayed with play. it. Nicely done. In the wind blowing straight in. And the ball moved around on him a little bit, but he was able to make the play. Well done with the catcher's glove. That's hard to do. Good job locating, adjusting. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see the graduate of the Molina School of Catching. Close friends with the Molina family. Logan Morris in the header, 0 for 3. Logan to ground out into the shift thrown out by Middlebrooks, a hard liner to short, a fly to center. Red Sox pitching held the Mariners to two hits. Good split. 80 miles an hour. Red Sox have the shift on with Morrison hitting. Two and one. One pitch, slice to left, and that's going to get down for a base hit. One out base runner here in the ninth inning. Mariners down three nothing. This fights off a fastball. It's on the inside corner. Gets in on his hands. Just flares it into left field with the shift on. An easy base hit for Morrison. Mike Zanino, tough night for Mike. Over three, all of them strikeouts. Two hits. Chavez in the third, a single. Cano a double in the sixth. And now the Morrison base hit gives him three for the evening. And strike two. And that's what he does. You can see that right on the red line on the outside corner. So he can throw a split here or maybe even go a little bit further away if he wants. Two. The R is set. O two. Struck him out. Four keys for Maximino tonight for Gordon Sombrero. 
two outs. And this looks like the split. It'll be down out of the strike zone. Swing right over the top of it. Bring up Indy Chavez. Indy has had a good night. Base hit his first time up. Walked in the fifth and then walked again in the seventh. Chris Denorfi has come out on deck. He will pinch hit for Brad Miller. Hopefully he will. See if Indy can reach base. Middlebrook's in on the grass at third for Indy. Boy, oh boy. Dating back to May 1 of 2011. In there for a strike. It's a three run homer throw down the second safe. Stolen base from Morris in his fourth. Well, they're not holding him on at first. Ends up being a much closer play. Great throw. By Vasquez, the catcher. Here we go, one and two to Andy. Two and two. Mariners 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position tonight. Crowd on its feet here. 2 2 pitch coming to Chavez. Runner at second, two outs. A 2 2 pitch. Just got a piece of it. I'm not sure how he did. It looked like that pitch was going to hit the plate. So we have split again. Pitch down well out of the strike zone, and Indy finds a way Ooh. just to get a piece of it. Here we go, two and two. Pitch outside for ball three. So Indy, three consecutive plate appearances, working a three ball count. And made Uhara work. This next pitch will be 20 for him in the inning. As you see, Denorfia getting ready to hit. He again, he's on deck, will pinch hit for Miller. Three and two. Two outs. Runner at second. Foul back. Right here by Andy Chavez. 3 2 pitch. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. One of the reasons why Lloyd McClendon wanted a couple of veterans that he could rely on part time players, bench players. They're not going to give at bats away. You may get them out, but they're going to fight you all the way to the end. And he's doing just that. Three and two. Uhara is ready to pitch. Slash foul again. Pitch number ten coming up to Indy. Here we go. Two outs. And it's second. Three two pits to Chavez. Walked him and a tying run's gonna come to the plate. What a great at bat by Andy Chavez. That's his third walk of the ball game. He also has a base hit. But 10 pitch at bat to give his club a chance and Kristen Norfi a well pinch hit. And a short porch out in left field. That was impressive. That was really impressive by Andy Chow. Professional at bat. Amen. Rear 
pinch hitting 221. He does have three home runs. Making it interesting. That's it strike one. First time facing you, Howard. Chris Denorfield. Representing the tying run here, 0 1 pitch. Out back, 0 and 2. Again, the Sox strike away from a W. Koji Chant going up. He's got Denorfia 0 2 pitch. Bounce it up there. Runners hold. We were on Homer by Cespedes has stood since the sixth inning they came off of Felix Hernandez. Mariners trying to battle back here two outs in the ninth tying run at the plate for the North field. The one two pitch. Hit the other way that'll get down base hit. The hold Morrison at third the Mariners have loaded him up. Base hit for Chris Denorfia. That's a big one. Second time tonight the Mariners have the bases loaded. No, Chris gets jammed. Good running fastball by Uhara and he fights it off into right field. I was watching Indy Chavez running again. Fortunately, he had his head up. I thought they would try to score Morrison on this, and he came flying around second. I thought he was going to try to go to third on the play. And right then he looks up and immediately has to stop. Just rallied to win and home against the White Sox in the ninth inning, 4-3. Mariners with that base hit now, one for six with mm. runners in scoring position. Why not? Well, Uhars had to throw 27 pitches so far in the inning. Why not? Strike one. Angels and Athletics 1 1, top two. A lot of good stuff going on right now. Top to six, Minnesota 6 5 over Detroit. Mariners looking for a big blow right here. 0 1. Austin Jackson behind quickly 0 2. He's 1 for 5 in his career against Uhara. A two run double. It's 3 2 Boston. How about this ninth inning? Well, we've been talking about it. The Red Sox continue to try to let the Mariners back in the ballgame, and now Uhara has thrown 30 pitches in the inning. He's given up a couple of runs, and this looks like a split down and in. Stays right about the knees, and Austin Jackson gets out in front and lines it off the wall in left field. I'll tell you what. That was close to getting elevated and hit out of here. He didn't miss it by much to hit it out of the ballpark. That's a screaming line drive. And now we'll bring up Dustin Ackley with Cano waiting on deck. Tying run 90 feet away. Ackley, first pitch. Strike one. First pitch split. Really good speed on the bases. Seventh man to the plate. With two outs. Pitch. Left field. Here comes Cespedes going back to shortstop. Oh, no, he dropped it. And the Mariners take the lead. 
the Mariners have taken a lead on that blooper to left. I think Holt hurt himself the shortstop as he dove for it, wasn't able to get to it. What an inning by the Mariners. Ackley with a blooper to left, Holt sold out. Two runs scored. Now Mariners have a 4 3 lead with two outs here in Boston. Ninth inning. And yes, Rodney is up in the bullpen. Take a look at it. Looks like he hits it right off the end of the bat. Great effort by Holt, the shortstop, but he lands on his shoulder. Cespedes was playing deep, which is what you should do late in the ball game. but what an effort. And a great break for the Mariners. What an inning for the Mariners. Oh my goodness. Uhara now at 32 pitches, and Robinson Cano due up. The Mariners have silenced this crowd with a dramatic two-out rally. Cano will be the eighth man to the plate. They were 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position and three straight hits for the Mariners with two outs to get this lead. And go back to Andy Chavez with that long at bat. Wow, Ten pitcher great... at, at bat. Ten pitches. The walk. Zenorfia follows with a single, double, and a single. Here's Cano. You said it way back, I don't know, about the seventh inning. They keep trying to give it to him. When you have a year like the Red Sox are having and you're trying to get in the postseason like the Mariners are, there's reasons for both. And the Red Sox were really not playing very well, especially pitching with all the walks, but the Mariners have had to hit their way back into it. It's a quality closer, and here they are with the lead. And the key to all it is somebody had to come up with a big base hit, and there are a number of them in this inning. Oh my goodness, yes. And it's coming with two outs. A two out walk to Indy. Denorfi Ten pitch off, walk to Indy. Denorfi off the bench with a single. Jackson 0 oh, 2. Split. Double <laughs> off the Green Monster. 0 oh, 1 pitch. Ackley drops one in. That scores two and gives the Mariners the lead. 4 3 Seattle. And a couple of the guys that the Mariners picked up at the deadline with Denorfi and Jackson. Huge in this inning. Absolutely. Cano 3 0. Rodney looks like he's ready to go out in the pen. Talk about turning the tide in a hurry. Boston was a, on a couple of occasions a strike away from ending a five game losing streak. wouldn't hurt. No it wouldn't again huge gap in right center field. With Ackley's speed he may even be able to score if he hits another line drive off the monster. Yeah, you know, Richie would be waving him around you can bet on that. Well, don't forget Cespedes hasn't played here a whole lot out the left field. Strike two to Cano three and two. Even better because now Ackley will take off with the pitch. 37 pitches in the inning for Uhara. Damage done with two outs, a walk, and then three consecutive hits. Three and two to Cano. Hit hard, base hit. Ackley to second. They're going to wave him to third. He's still waving him. Here's a throw to the plate by Pedroia. It is not in time. Donnelly was waving all, all the way. way and I told you with his speed and then it went it went to three and two he could take off with the pitch and Dustin has tremendous speed what an effort by Dustin Ackley to score and you're right Donnelly sending him the entire way didn't hesitate at all looks like a split up in the zone hits it hard there's Dustin on the move and he's running hard as soon as he sees this going to hit the outfield grass he takes off look how early he gets it casual throw in and Donnelly continues to send him a little bit of an in-between hop. Good play by Vasquez, the catcher, but just too much speed from Ackley. And how about the fact that Nava was sort of nonchalant to get it back in? He didn't charge it at all. He didn't expect that. He didn't expect it. And you know what? That's what give, that's where you give Donnelly the credit because he watched the entire play. He was watching this play all the way. He knows Dustin's speed. He knows that, that he can fly. And he's watching this right here. I'm casual. And then just flip it into the second baseman, Pedroia. Pedroia knew. You can see how quickly he turned. 
There was and that's taking advantage of it. And once again, that's the reason why when you're losing games, things like that matter. Boom, baby. 5-3. What a ninth in Boston. Hey, now. Ninth inning continues with Morales. Ninth man to the plate in the ninth inning. This has been one of the best ninth innings the Mariners have had in years. One of the big keys on that play with Ackley scoring, Dave, is Rich Donnelly. All he could do is watch the right fielder, and we showed the replay. And then he has to depend because he knows Ackley's speed. He's depending on Ackley to run hard the entire way. If Ackley doesn't run hard, he's assuming that he is, and then maybe the play turns out differently. So well done by Ackley and Donnelly both. Good block there by Vasquez. And when I saw Dustin take off, we had just spoken about it. Richie would be waving one way. I looked at and I saw, man, he was pumping that right <laughs> arm, man. <laughs> it's, 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 it's rare that they get the opportunity to have that kind of play as you look at the numbers for Mahika. And once Dustin was called safe, he turned around, had a fist pump going to the dugout. It was great. <laughs> and Morales, a called third strike. What a bountiful ninth inning. Five runs, five hits. The Mariners take the lead. It's 5 3 Seattle. Here. 
And a reminder that Root Sports is looking for the ultimate Northwest fan in the state of Idaho throughout the month of August. Send us your photo and story using hashtag ultimate NW fan ID or by email and you could win a trip, a VIP trip for two to Seattle in September, personalized jersey and more. For official rules, visit rootsports.com. Turn your caps at 10 o'clock for Nando Rodney time. As the Mariners were twice down to the last strike, didn't look like he was going to get a, an appearance here tonight. And just one of the best ninth inning rallies we've seen certainly since we've been working yeah, in together. a long time. Rodney looking for his 37th save on the year. But uh, you're absolutely right, Dave. I, I think it was just what an inning. And again, give Indy Chavez. A lot of guys that need. Oh, man. Yeah, Indy Chavez with the 10 pitch walk and all the pitches that he fouled off. Denorfia coming off the bench and getting a big pinch hit to keep things going. Then Austin Jackson, the double. Behind in the count, wow. 02. 02 and hit a split off the wall. Boy. Cano with a couple of hits tonight. Drove in a run, actually scoring. Will what a night. Will Middlebrooks. Brock Holt, Mookie Betts against Fernando Rodney. First pitch, a strike. Or Rodney, his fastball, 93 to 97 miles an hour. And the great changeup right around 80. Boy, you know, when that number got posted around the American League, they're going, who, what? There are a lot of teams looking at it, too. Chris Taylor will take over at shortstop again to Norfia, pinch hitting for Brad Miller, who started the game. So now Taylor in. We talk about his throwing arm all the time, and that's the reason why he's one of the few. Yeah, you can smile about it that can make that play. I was on with a buddy of mine, local radio here, Joe D'Ambrosio, WTIC in Hartford, and I told him about that play. Who else makes that play in the league? Not many. Not many. Take a look at it. A lot of second basemen can turn and make the throw, but to get as much on it and an accurate throw, an easy play for Morrison right on the money. Most of them will have to jump in the air and they're not able to get much on it, but he's he has a special arm. Brock Holt. Talking to the great Peter Gammons, Hall of Fame baseball writer. He was relaying a conversation he had with A's GM Billy Bean about the pennant race and what's going on right now. And Billy's quote about the Mariners. Because Peter had gone on MLB Network and said, hey, the Mariners are team to watch. Be careful. And he said he got ridiculed over there. So he repeated it to Billy. And Billy said, the Mariners scare them out of me. Pitching. Yep. Scares the blank out of me. Silly <laughs> Bean. That's the guy that started the game tonight. Felix. Flips it to left field. Ackley's got it in his sights and in his glove. Two down. Done here. Now the Mariners are one out away from victory. The Red Sox are twice a couple of strikes, a strike away from victory. Don't forget, you are their closer. He threw 37 pitches, and they're coming right back with a day game tomorrow. Here's Mookie Betts, 0 for three. Lando is pumped. Vasquez 
Vasquez tonight is grounded out three times twice to Kyle Seeger at third and wants to shortstop. See Trent Jewett, bench coach, letting the outfielders know no double, so they'll play deep with Vasquez. Is three ground outs tonight, twice to Seeger, once to the shortstop Miller. All of a sudden, Fernando off his game a touch. Certainly don't want to turn the lineup over. You have no Nava way. waiting on deck. He's doubled and scored a run, and then you have Pedroia and Ortiz, all kinds of problems mm -hmm. after that. Back in the strike zone, 1 1. Should be able to get this. High five, whomever you're near in Seattle, baby. What a win by the Mariners. A heart stopping, jump starting rally in the night to end a nine game losing streak here in Boston. Mariners win this ball game five to three. A lot of good things for the Mariners, especially in that ninth inning. Some quality at bat. Some guys that really played well. Dustin Ackley with the big base hit also scored from first. But gutsy. Performance by the Mariners is the game.